Ontario students are now well into their second consecutive month out of the classroom, and many parents are struggling to juggle their roles as teachers while they work from home and also trying to run the household as well. Education expert Sonny Verma joins us now with three ways that parents can stop striving to turn their home into a school and instead create an environment that makes kids want to learn. Good morning, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning. So the first thing I think we have to remember that parents are holding a lot of guilt right now, but our kids feel like they've just won the lottery. They don't have to go to school. And I'm absolutely <laughs> certain if I was their age, I would have wished this would have happened to me too. So I think we have to take a step back and put ourselves in our kids' shoes and understand that this isn't school from home, but this is learn from home. And there is a distinct difference. And in order to reduce that parental guilt and actually increase the learning at home, what I highly, highly, mm -hmm. highly recommend is to loosen the learning restrictions and the easiest way to actually do this is to co-create new learning expectations between you and your kids and I really want to stress the word co-create here that just means you have to sit down with your kids and have that open dialogue about how long they'd like to learn what they'd like to learn and when they'd like to learn on a week by week basis and if you allow them to actively participate in this conversation the great thing is that it's going to be so much easier for you to hold them accountable and that will overall help reduce that parental guilt it's difficult because there are a lot of pressures uh mckenna my son is, is 12 and a half we've, we've got a tutor now to get him a couple hours a day of doing some schoolwork because a lot of the times he said well here's all the schoolwork i had for the day and it's a half hour and then you hear from other people who's whose kids, they say, well, they're doing five hours of school a day and you're worried about falling behind and all these pressures that are on parents right now. You know, that's a really good point, and I'm hearing that across the board. But what I want to remind parents is that all learning is learning, even the non-academic learning. So the best thing a parent can do is to take into consideration your child's interests and figure out how you can actually inspire this learning within the household. So if you're, let's say your child wants to cook and bake with you, they're really great because that means they're going to learn about fractions, ratios, and measurements without you really having to lift a finger. Let's say they want to go for a hike with you. They're probably going to be learning about ecology and the circle of life. And, and if they're so inclined to even help you with the household chores, trust me, this isn't just free labor there's some other benefit here they're probably learning about organization <laughs> and planning skills as well and and one of the things just because there isn't a test or assignment associated with this type of learning doesn't make it more valuable if anything this could be a lot more valuable than opening up a textbook do you want to point out when you're doing things like that that they're learning those things or do you just want to kind of leave it organic uh, I think depending on who your child is, but overall, it's always nice to add a little bit of that because like, let's say you are teaching them about uh, uh, cooking and fraction and ratios. You can tell them like what's one half a cup of, of baking soda versus um, just actually them pouring it freehand. And I think that goes a very long way because it gets them to start to think about it a lot differently. It is. And it's a, it's a very different situation. The, the creativity is uh, so important. Also, what about leaving some unstructured time? Do we... Do we nag them when they get on the screen or something like that? Or right now, as long as most things are done, do we let them go? I think we got to be more forgiving than ever right now, right? I think we have to understand that it isn't just us as parents that are going through this. It is also our, our children. And what I highly recommend is actually just celebrate the smallest things that your kids are doing right. It, they need this right now. And if you celebrate all the small things they do right, you're actually in fact increasing their overall creativity and what that's going to do is really create a beautiful bond between you and your child because that's going to show them that you actually care about what they care about and more importantly they need a sense of guidance and direction right now and and we aren't really thinking about that for our kids we're thinking that more for ourselves as adults but what this will actually do is give them a sense of hope in this extreme time of uncertainty and need and uh, one last question before we go uh, it is looking more and more like kids won't be going back this year. Do we end our school year when the school year ends? Do we try and keep kids going through the summer? What, uh, what do you suggest? No, absolutely not. Keep the learning going. And the reason for this is that we already have this issue of what we call summer learning loss. Now we have COVID learning loss. And that's about almost a six month hiatus of proper structured learning. So I would 100% recommend that parents find alternatives to actually their child's education, whether that be getting a tutor, whether that be looking at YouTube videos and, and teaching your children through that or finding new inspiring ways to encourage learning within the household. But I highly recommend do not take the summer off. This is the one summer in human history I would suggest don't give your children the full entire break. All right, beautiful. Sunny, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me.